live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from Central Europe. I hope everybody is off to a good weekend, staying healthy, staying safe. Uh, in this class, we are accepting questions and giving answers to unravel, meaning to understand the complexity of the international English language testing system. This uh, class is a members chat class. That means to join the chat. You have to be a member to become a member. Click the join button beside the subscribe button on the channel. If you don't see that join button, there are a couple of different steps that you can take. I can help you with those. Uh, send me an email to adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. Uh, Let's take a look at our websites just real quick while we're waiting for some of our members to join in on the class. This is our academic website here at aehelp.com. And you can click that big red button to join the premium package. Uh, for the general IELTS, uh, you can uh, take a look at gielts.help.com. It's the green background. Click that big red button to join our premium package there. Hi, Pavan. Hi, Maksud, Alexander, Bumi, Ferdovs. Nice to see our members joining in. Members, this is uh, a Q&A session uh, that we do once every couple weeks, so questions and answers. Uh, I know that these questions come up while you're studying, so make sure to write them down so you can uh, share them in these classes. So again, for academic IELTS, aehelp.com. And for general IELTS, it's G I E. LT.com. Uh, both of those websites are supported by apps. For GIELTSHELP.com, download the app General IELTS Help. And for AEHELP.com, download the app Academic IELTS Help. Hi, Rajveer. All right, students. Um, so today, right now, Q&A, questions and answers for members. Uh, next uh, class, which is in 90 minutes, where everybody can join the chat. That will be speaking part three. That will be for everyone. And uh, then, of course, next week, again, I will have classes Wednesday to Saturday. And uh, I already have that schedule, so it will be on the channel also. Hi, Roshni. All right, uh, members, uh, go ahead and start typing in your questions into the chat. It's a first come, first serve basis. So um, I'll take the questions in the order that I see them in the chat. Of course, if questions are relevant to each other, then I might go a little bit out of order, but otherwise I will look at questions in the order uh, that, they, uh, that they appear. And I see Roshni is not wasting any time. Uh, Roshni says, how do you use the conjunction since that's a very, very clever question, Roshni. It's uh, more clever than more, most people may realize. So um, Roshni says, uh, how do I use? Yeah, good question. Great question, Roshni, to start today. So how do I use the conjunction? Conjunction means a joining word. For those of you who don't know conjunction. Uh, conjunction since. Okay. Well, there's two definitions. Okay. Number one, uh, since equals because. And number two, um, since equals from a time, from a given time. Okay. So, now, uh, I'm going to explain this a little bit more, Roshni, and uh, I'm going to get into it a little bit more. So uh, there are three main groups of conjunctions. What are they, students? So let's do a little bit of interaction here. So we'll get a little bit into grammar for about the next 10 minutes because this is very useful for your English communication and task two writing, task one writing as well as your speaking. So what are the three main groups of conjunctions? It's three main types. Okay. They are coordinating, 
coordinating. These ones are like and, for, nor. Okay, I'm not going to type them all. There's about seven, eight of these. There's correlative. Correlative are the ones that are paired, right? So both and, neither, nor. We've studied these as well. Okay. And there's subordinating. That's right. Subordinating conjunctions, Bumi. So the three main categories are coordinating, correlative, and subordinating. If you're going for a high band score, 6.5 or more, uh, you definitely need a good idea of all of these. Okay. So um, subordinating. Okay. So this is Number one, coordinating and for nor. There's some interesting uh, ways to use these. There's about seven, eight of these fan boys, uh, seven, seven of these. Um, and for correlative, there's about 10 or so of these ones. Um, and uh, the subordinating, there's uh, basically four groups in subordinating conjunctions. What are the four groups of subordinating conjunctions? Anybody know? So for subordinating conjunctions, there's four different subgroups. It's the biggest family of conjunctions. Does anybody know? Yeah, so Bumi says conditional. Very good. Okay. Um, Rajvir says cause and effect. Yeah, very good. I'm going to, even for high level students, you're going to learn something very interesting here that many people don't know, even native speakers. So cause and effect condition. What's the third one? Okay, number three. I still don't see it yet. Somebody should be able to give me that. Condition, cause and effect. Comparison is not one Abhishek as well. Okay, I'm going to uh, jump to okay, three. I'm going to leave for now. I want you to come up with it. And then uh, let's just put a couple of placeholders there. There's time as well. Okay. Okay, what else is there? I still don't see it. Okay, for time, uh, give me some, I'm going to come back to condition, cause and effect, and the third one you're going to realize here uh, very, very soon. Okay, uh, it's not place. Okay, it's not place. Um, for time, give me some subordinating conjunctions of time. One of them you're not going to be surprised about is since. Okay, so since is one of them. What other ones do we use in time for subordinating conjunctions? When, very good. Okay, what else do we use for subordinating conjunctions? Before, yeah, sure. After, right? During, very good. Until, I'm going to jump back here a little bit. While, okay, is another one. Yeah, good. All right, um, so for condition, give me a couple for condition. Okay, for conditional, what are some um, conjunctions that we use for condition? One of them 
Okay, this is a Q&A class. I'm going to move a little bit faster here is if. And another one that we use is when. And we use even phrases, right? So provided that. Given that, okay, those are a few that we use as well, okay, so if, when, provided that, given that, um, those are used. Uh, cause and effect, cause and effect we use because. And we also use uh, since. Sorry, I just <laughs> had a couple of thoughts going through my head there. Okay, um, I still didn't see the uh, this one here, but one of the ones that we use here is while. Can anybody tell me what the third group is? Another one that we use in this third group is however. So what's the missing group here? Okay, so we have condition, if, when, provided that, given that. We have cause and effect, because, since, and so on. And then we have the third group here where it's, we use while, however, on the other hand. What kind of, uh, it's not a, compa comparison is okay. We actually say opposition, okay? Yeah, I, I think comparison is okay. Comparison is too general, so Hemant, it's better to call this group opposition, okay? So the four types of subordinating conjunctions are condition, cause and effect, opposition, and time. Um, now, notice something super interesting here, members. Uh, in time, we have since, and we also have since in cause and effect, also in time, we have when, and we have when in condition, okay? Now, we have while in time, and we have while in opposition. What's going on? Why do you think that is? This is the million dollar question. So why do time conjunctions for subordinators also exist in the other types? Can anybody answer that tricky question of the day? If you can, you'll get my super double thumbs up. So here is the question. Why do time subordinating adverbs exist in the other categories. Hmm, did English speakers go crazy or have we come up with some kind of a logic there? So Rajveer says its usage is based on context. Yeah, mm-hmm. Uh, Pavan says maybe they're versatile. So you're kind of in the right concept there, Roshni, with um, it depends on context, okay? Uh, time is one of our dimensions. Yay, don't forget. Time is the fourth dimension. It, time, connects a lot of other contexts or situations. Okay, I'm going to explain this to you more clearly, all right? So, <laughs> Alexander says, questions are crazy too. It's not about being crazy, Alexander. There is actually logic uh, to this uh, situation. So, um, I'm going to give you a couple of interesting sentences and then... Uh, you will uh, figure it out really quickly here. So here are two different sentences. Uh, when I have a hundred dollars, 
I like to buy expensive uh, chocolates for my wife. Okay, versus if I had a hundred dollars, I would buy expensive chocolates for my wife. Okay, uh, what's the difference between these two sentences? When I have a hundred dollars, I like to buy expensive chocolates for my wife. If I had a hundred dollars, I would buy expensive chocolates uh, for my wife. Okay, what's the difference there? And this is called mastery and control over language. So for those of you who want to get a band eight, band nine on the IELTS exam, you want to start thinking about this level of mastery, okay? So the difference is, this is real, it happens. Meaning sometimes I have a hundred dollars and I buy chocolates for my wife and this one is unreal okay I do not have a hundred dollars to buy expensive chocolates for my wife okay so the actual message between these two are very, very different here, okay? Here, this one, when I have $100, I like to buy expensive chocolates for my wife. It means it's real, okay? It means that it happens and sometimes I have that money and then I buy those expensive chocolates. Here, it means it's unreal. Now, you're saying, okay, whatever, but we can kind of say both of these in the same way. Um, and people will understand. Yeah, sure. However, if you're doing a business deal, it could be really important to control these two different types of conditional conjunctions. I'll give you an example. If you give me the contract, I will build you a great house. When you give me the contract, I will build you a great house. Okay? These two look very similar. However, to a native speaker, this one shows more confidence. Does that make sense, students? This is really important, especially for those of you who are businessmen, businesswomen, and uh, you want to win contracts and you want to control uh, the business environment more. It's very important to know this, okay? So you need to control your language just by changing this one little word here, the if to when, gives you a better chance to get that contract, okay? So the same is true for all of these other types of subordinating conjunctions, okay? So I just showed you an example with conditional, the if versus when, when you use a conditional, okay? Now, for cause and effect, it's the same idea. If the cause-effect relationship includes time, it's better to use since, okay? I'll give you an example of that one. So, since <clears throat> I broke my left leg over a year ago, I've been more careful while hiking in the mountains. Okay, so here there is cause and effect and time. Since I broke my left leg over a year ago, I've been more careful while hiking in the mountains. While is the conjunction of time, since is the conjunction of cause and effect. So I'm careful 
for hiking because I broke my left leg. Now, since this is related to time, I'm using the time conjunction more here, okay? I know I have changing light conditions because I have a window open, students, so if uh, these clouds get out of hand, then I'll have to uh, shut my curtains, but I'll try to... <laughs> I'll try to not do it just yet. I know it's kind of annoying. Apologies for that. So again, uh, so since I broke my left leg over a year ago, I've been more careful while hiking in the mountains. Okay, makes sense? All right. So it's the same with opposition. All right. Um, while I like to watch movies in my free time i don't like to read books okay so again here there's a relationship of time i'm even using the word free time so while i like to watch movies in my free time i don't like to read books you could say um, although I, all though I like to watch movies in my free time, I don't like to read books. So you could say it like that. Okay. Again, the meaning here is the same. But this one's better because this one emphasizes or strengthens the concept of time. Does that make sense? I'm just going to do one more adjustment on the lighting here. I see it's kind of annoying, so just give me a second. So does that make sense? All right, there we go. Cool. All right. So it looks like that makes sense for most of you. That's fantastic. There. All right. So just one last adjustment to the lighting there. It'll be good now. Um, okay, cool. So uh, very good question, Roshni. So Roshni says, how do we use since? <laughs> and I know I gave you a really uh, tricky answer there, Roshni. Um, but the most important point here is since is used as a conjunction of time and cause and effect. You want to use since instead of because when the uh, context, as Rajvir said or suggested, also includes time. Okay. Exactly, Alexander. So Alexander's saying, are you saying that those conjunctions have an additional meaning in time that makes them more powerful or useful when the context involves time? Yes, absolutely. Now, um, in speaking, because speaking happens quickly, it's tricky to practice, but definitely do it when you're writing. Okay. So here's a little tip for home practice. While you are writing task one and task two essays, review your essays to see which of your connections involve the context of time and make sure to use the best subordinating conjunction possible. Of course, you want to do that in your university essays and in your business deals because it will make your writing much more powerful and much better. Okay, so that was a great question, Roshni, with uh, maybe an unexpected answer for that one. Okay, really nice question to start today's Q&A. All right, uh, let's see some other questions. This is why it's great. Just whatever question you have, students, ask it because you never know what's going to happen. Okay. All right, uh, so let me see what else came up. I saw there were a couple in the beginning of our chat, so I'm just going to go back a little bit. 
Okay, sorry, I missed uh, yours, Pavan and Ferdovs. I saw that came up even earlier. Uh, so Pavan's asking, sir, can we change the legend, for instance, crafts or similar, to crafts or other relative activities? Um, that's You're asking Pavan about yesterday's task one um, pie chart answer, for those of you who aren't on board with that. Um, I would just use crafts, Pavan. So I know that there's similar or relative activities, but it's too wordy, okay? So uh, Pavan's asking, and I'm going to generalize your question here a little bit, Pavan. So Pavan's asking, um, what words should I use from the task one uh, charts? Okay, I'm going to keep it like that. So when you see really long descriptions like uh, crafts and other uh, relative activities, then uh, just use crafts. Okay, so you don't, you shouldn't use really long titles uh, from the charts in your essay if it's not necessary. Okay, so that's my answer for that one, Pavan. Use the shorter uh, possible title or word. Sometimes those bars or those pies have like really long titles for what they mean. Uh, try to use the shortest form possible. Otherwise, the essay looks awkward and you're wasting a lot of time and space to write the long titles. I think that's the question you're asking me, Pavan. So if it's clear, let me know. If that's not what you're asking me, also please let me know as well, okay? Um, Okay, Ferdov says, I sometimes find it difficult to determine uh, the topic and a controlling idea in writing task two and which one is important. Okay, uh, Ferdov, that's a good question. So uh, to make that into a question, Ferdov, is um, how can I determine the topic and controlling idea in task two? That's a good question for Dobbs, absolutely. I think it's been asked before, but uh, it's, it's definitely a good question. For Dobbs, um, the reason it's tricky is sometimes the topic is not as obvious, right? Like yesterday, we talked about medical masks uh, worn during an epidemic, and the topic was masks, and the controlling idea was advantages, disadvantages. This was a little bit easier. Uh, sometimes they're not so obvious, okay? So sometimes the topic is a bit hidden, okay? It's covert. Uh, I think one essay that we took uh, was um, uh, parenting practices, Right, so that was a bit of a hidden topic, the figuring out that it's parenting practices. Um, what you need to do for Dobbs is stop and ask yourself, okay? So stop and ask. What are we talking about here, okay? You should be able to answer this in one to three words. Okay, so the topic should never be more than three words. It should really be only one word most of the time for Dobbs. So if you have to use more than one word, you probably, or sorry, more than three words, you probably don't have the right topic. Okay, and then the same thing, you need to ask a question of um, what in relation uh, to the topic do we want to know? That's your controlling idea. Okay, so this first one where you stop, that's how you figure out the topic. And the second one is how you figure out the controlling idea. Now, this does take practice for Dobbs, and this is why you want to practice identifying 
topics and controlling ideas in class with others, compare your answers and discuss who has the best and most concise topic and why. Okay. So that's really, really important. All right. I'm just moving through the chat members. So stay with me. Okay. Rajveer says, yes, it's clear. It's the, the art of using the correct words based on context. You're right. Rajveer. Absolutely. About the conjunctions. Um, all right. Okay. Pavan good. So th that answered your question. That's fantastic. That's what I was hoping. Okay. Um, Heman says, can you please explain the usage of had had? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll do that. Hamant in a moment. Um, basically, uh, had had Hamant, uh, it's uh, just using the verb have as the uh, past perfect called an auxiliary verb with the actual verb had. Okay. Uh, I'll show you. So Hamant is asking, uh, that's a really weird one when uh, there's even bean bean as well. Another one, Hamant, bean bean. Um, so Hamant is asking, had had. When do or when does... English use ba -ba -da -ba -da, had had ba -ba 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 -ba. okay so here when you see this uh, had is being used in two different contexts or two different meanings okay um, so Hemant um, I had had a terrible uh, headache. Um, before I took a Tylenol, Tylenol, very popular kind of painkiller. Uh, let me, maybe it will make more sense. Painkiller. Okay. All right. Um, so come on, here's an, I had had a terrible headache before I took a painkiller. Okay. Uh, so. Here, the idea is uh, subject. Subject is the I. So this is the structure, Hamant. Uh, plus auxiliary verb have in past tense. Okay. Uh, plus uh, past participle. Because this sentence is, of course, past perfect, right? So uh, past participle have, which is had, okay? And then uh, plus object. I'm not gonna keep going. Of course, we have more elements, uh, but uh, you get the idea. All right, so when you see the uh, had had, okay, I know it sounds weird and awkward, um, then uh, basically it's a past perfect which needs the verb have, okay? So I had had a terrible headache before I took a painkiller. Uh, does that make sense, Hamant? Is that what you were asking for there, an explanation of when we see that? I hope that clarifies that, okay? And then Haman says, sir, can you also explain how to smoothly form complex and compound uh, sentences? Ooh, we're going into a lot of grammar lessons. Hamant, I'll come back to that if there are no more specific IELTS lessons. Okay, so Haman says, yeah. Roshni says, yep, that's good. Um, Rajveer, very good. Okay, that's a little bit more IELTS-ish uh, related. Okay. Um, students, for this, so uh, on the website, I'm going to show you something here because I see that there's a lot of uh, questions coming up here about these complex compound sentences. So I'm going to, I know a lot of you have access to our websites because I probably won't be able to answer all of these questions in one hour and 
I'm really condensing it. Like uh, when I was explaining those uh, correlative, coordinating, subordinating sentences, I basically took like 20 hours of lessons and put it into uh, 20 minutes. But um, if you go to ahelp.com, glshelp.com has this as well. And then you go to your My Student account. And I believe the free version of the course also has this. Um, so you'll see the computer-based exams. And then underneath, I'm going to darken the screen a little bit for this because it's a brighter background, of course. We don't have a dark version of our website just for the live classes. Uh, so you see the full online IELTS course. We really worked hard to develop this course. And I know a lot of students, when they use our website, they use it for the practice exams and the lesson videos. But I really, really encourage students to use the full course, okay? So you open up that full course. And then in a full course, you'll see all of these sections here, the uh, key strategy lessons. Let me just see if, yeah, you can see that. Okay, so you can see that. And then you keep going along and you'll get into uh, the writing lessons, the speaking lessons. Of course, it's in the same order as the exam. And the last one, the F1 here, the bonus uh, writing and grammar, okay? Um, we took a um, very communication-based approach to develop this lesson, meaning that it's not like the grammar books that you see uh, in your bookstores. We looked at how people communicate, um, and we devised and created a system to build up your grammar based on the logic of your communication. So... When you go through this course, it's pretty heavy, so make sure you have a good internet connection, then um, you're going to get to these uh, compound and complex sentences. So let me just go through this with you a little bit here, okay? So uh, I'm not, it's, this is a fairly long course, so I'm not going to have time to show all of it for you, but look for sentence composition. And then when you go to the sentence composition, it'll start you off with the basics, so the simple sentence. And it'll start you off with, uh, John walks to school. Can you see that? I know it's a little bit smaller because it's not designed for this type of lesson, but it starts off with subject, verb, object. Let me see if I can... Get this a little bit bigger for you here. There we go. Okay, so it'll start off with this very, very basic. And then um, we'll keep going here. And it will explain the differences of past, past participle. And then you'll get into more complex ideas. Okay, so it'll give you these kinds of explanations. So it'll say, okay, here's the name, it's simple present, here's the structure, here's the example. Susan plays in the living room, and then it'll give you an explanation, a general action that usually happens, okay? And you'll keep going along, and you will get to these much more complex ones. Let me see if I can... Get to these ones for you here real quick. So here's a cool slide that kind of gives you an idea of what's happening here. So here you see this still or moving, right? Um, and uh, this is where you can use the sentence, I walk to work or I'm walking to work. So the progressive versus simple form. The simple form, you're basically uh, showing a picture to your listener as where with the uh, progressive form, I'm walking to work, you're basically showing a video, a continuous motion to your listener, okay? And then, let me just kind of, it's a little bit tricky for me here to navigate this for these live classes, but 
I'll go all the way to what some of you were asking. And then I'm going to stop. So here is your correlative conjunctions, the not only but also, and then you'll get into your, I think it's about 100 slides, students. So this is what we were talking about today, the time, cause, effect, opposition, condition, the subordinating conjunctions, and then it gets into... Uh, how to create those complex compound sentences, okay? So my friend and I are crying because that clown is very funny. So here you're creating a compound sentence and the compound sentence becomes a complex sentence using cause and effect. So this is where it builds up um, to how you create these smooth compound and complex sentences. Okay, so that's where you need to go. So again, uh, this is in your My Student account. I believe it's also in the free version of our course, and it's the bonus writing and grammar section. So go through that. Okay, so I'm going to kind of just answer all of those grammar questions with that for now, instead of jumping around to these different types of grammar questions. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, thumbs up. I'll brighten up our lives a little bit here, get back to our... Uh, darker backdrop. Does that make sense, uh, members? I know that was a bit of a lengthy explanation of how to use the website there and where to go, but I think that's where you'll get the most benefit. And instead of jumping around in this live class, those slides will go through step one, step two. Please start at the beginning and just go through each step, okay? So Himan says yes, Ferdov says sure, Maksud says sure. And then if you still have questions, so if you're like, okay, I went through, but I still don't get a couple of points here, then send me an email and ask me, okay? All right, um, so. Uh, Ferdov's is asking, in speaking part three, can I give examples from my own life and experience. I mean, can I use I? Yes, you can. Okay, so this is really confusing because I know a lot of teachers and a lot of people say, oh, you don't, you shouldn't use personal examples in part three. It's not true. Okay, so for Dobbs is asking, can I use personal examples with first person voice? in part three of the speaking? The answer, yes, you can. Use smooth flowing examples to back up your general ideas and explanations. Okay. Uh, for those, we'll have a speaking part three class coming up in about 45 minutes. So I'll show you more about that there, but definitely, uh, don't say for example, or for instance. Okay. So don't say for example, or for instance, instead, just say the example. Okay, so I'll give you uh, one clear kind of uh, example of this. Let's say in part three, uh, you have a question like, uh, what can people do to stay safe during a pandemic? And then you'll answer, well, so don't, so if you have this question, okay, uh, this is a don't. Okay, don't say, I, well, I wash my hands and uh, stay at least one meter away from others during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Okay, so don't say that, but you can say this. Okay, so don't do that, but you can do this. Well... Individuals 
uh, should keep at least a one meter distance from others uh, and wash their hands regularly. Also, they should wear um, a mask when they go out into public. This is the reason I came to this exam center wearing a mask. Okay, so yes, you can use personal examples for dogs, and this is how you want to use them. So what can people do to stay safe during a pandemic? You can't say, well, I wash, uh, well, I wash my hands, wash my hands, I wash my hands, missing H there, multitasking. Uh, well, I wash my hands and stay at least, because it's not asking about you. So this would be a bad answer. You'll lose marks. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, or if you said, for example, I wash my hands, this is a bad answer because you're not answering the question. But if you say, well, individuals should keep at least one meter distance from others and wash their hands regularly. Also, they should wear a mask when they go out into public. This is the reason I came to this exam center wearing a mask. That's okay. And you will get points for that kind of a visual personal example. Don't say, for example, I came to this, okay? Just say, this is the reason. Does that make sense for Dobbs? So how to use it? So yes, you can use it. The better question is how to use it, okay? How to use it. All right, um, members, I'm going to stop there. I can see that uh, you have some more questions. That's great. Um, and... Um, you can ask away later on as well. You can ask questions, members, in our regular classes too. I, if I catch them, I will address them. So uh, don't worry about it. Ask away. That's what I'm here to do to help you. For everybody who's watching, again, uh, make sure to stay tuned in 30 minutes, 40 minutes. I will host a speaking part three class with questions, answers, and strategies, just like uh, the one we discussed with Ferdov's question. And uh, be sure to visit us at aehelp.com. Sign up for our premium course. You saw a little bit of that in the class. Uh, the gltshelp.com as well for general IELTS students. They also include original practice exams, over 100 hours of video lessons that you can use on your phone, tablet, PC. It includes apps as well. So Lots of goodies there for you. Spend a couple dollars, do yourself a favor, get prepared for your next test starting today. Um, that's it for now, members. I'm sorry I couldn't get to everybody's question, but I hope you still took away a lot of great knowledge to practice at home. Bye for now. Hopefully, I'll catch you in 30 minutes for some speaking.